Hey guys, what's up? Hope you're doing well. If you're new to this channel, my name is Joseph. I'm a third year student at the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland. In this video, I wanted to get into the number one study tip I wish I knew before I started med school. This tip doesn't just work for med school, it works for anything where you have to memorize a lot of information. I'll be going through what it is and how you can apply it to your normal study routine. So let's get into it. My number one study tip is never sleeping. Like, just think about it. When you're sleeping, you're just laying there with your eyes closed, total waste of time. Ever since I stopped sleeping, I've saved like an extra eight hours every single night. I'm just joking. The strategy I wanna talk about is called active recall. And it's essentially where you use questions at every single step to help consolidate the information that you're learning from your short-term memory into your long-term memory. And this is instead of normal studying techniques that are passive, just reading through your textbooks, listening to your lectures. They work and you'll learn some information, but it won't be as efficient and you won't remember it for as long. When I first started med school, I was really determined to stay caught up with the material. I didn't want to fall behind. But to do that, I found myself leaving the library at like 10 p.m. every single day. And I knew that it wasn't sustainable, so I had to look for another method that would help me learn the information just as well, but would save me a lot more time. And that's what led me to active recall. I think the misconception that a lot of people have about studying is that you use things like reading, writing, highlighting to learn the information, and then you ask yourself questions just to see how well you know the information. But that's not right. The asking yourself questions part is actually the most important part of your study strategy. And that's what's gonna consolidate the information from your short-term memory to your long-term memory. So let's get into how we can actually use active recall. It consists of two steps. The first step is revision. This will involve reading the material, listening to your lectures, highlighting, whatever that may be. You have to see the information first before you can use active recall. And during this first step, it is so important that you understand what you're learning. It's really hard just to memorize a string of words. It's much easier to memorize something that you understand. If there's a word you don't know, then look it up. Or if there's a concept you don't understand, pause and take the time to learn that concept. Even though you might not need to memorize those details, having read it might make memorizing the thing you're looking at a lot easier. That first step will commit that information to your short-term memory. But to move it from your short-term memory to your long-term memory, you're going to need to use active recall. Just to give an example, let's say I'm learning about arthritis. And my lecture slide says, Arthritis affects the hands, the knees, the hips, and the spine the most. I want to memorize that information. So in my first step, I'm going to read through that list. I'm going to look up any words I don't know. And then I'm going to ask myself, why is that the case? So I'll go, I'll read a bit about it online. And I find out that arthritis affects the joints that you use the most often. So your hands, because you're always writing with it, doing things with it. And then your spine, your knees, and your hip, because they're carrying a lot of weight. Now that I know that little tidbit of information, it's gonna make it a lot easier to memorize that list. Now for the active recall step, I'm gonna pause. I'm gonna close my computer, close my eyes, move my textbook out of the way, whatever that may be. I'm gonna ask myself, what are the most affected areas of the body in arthritis? And I'm gonna to say to myself, the hands, the knees, the spine, and the hips. And if I get it wrong, I'm just gonna do it again and again until I get it right. Now doing that might not seem like much, but if you just read through an entire page, or if you do read through an entire page and pause every once in a while to close your eyes and try to repeat to yourself what you think you read, you're gonna see a huge difference. You're gonna memorize it a lot better in the latter scenario. So now let's get into a few practical tips on how you can apply this into your normal study strategies. The first is with note taking. I've met a lot of people whose study strategy was to read a lecture, take notes on that, and look at their notes and take more notes on that. And they would just write everything that they needed to learn and they thought that that would somehow help them learn the information. And that works to a certain extent, but it is so time consuming. Please do not do that. Remember, it's not just about learning the information, but it's also about learning the information in a way that's efficient. You don't wanna spend all of your time studying. My recommendation when it comes to note-taking is taking your notes in question and answer format. So instead of writing a note like, the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell, instead you might write, what is the powerhouse of the cell? And in a line below it, you'll write the mitochondria. When you write your notes this way, it means you only have to do it once 
And then when you're reviewing, you can just go through, read the question, cover up the answer, and then ask yourself what the answer is. And that way you'll know the information a lot better for your exam. Now, what's even better than note-taking is using flashcards. And this is personally what I do. Using flashcards is by far the most efficient way to learn information. I used to carry around physical flashcards, but I stopped doing that because I would literally just have bags of flashcards with me that I took everywhere. What I use now is Anki. That's my app of choice and it is amazing. Lots of people also like to use Quizlet because it has games and stuff like that in it. But I like to use Anki because it also includes space repetition. When you're done a question, it'll ask you how hard it was. And based on how hard you thought it was, it'll choose a date to bring it back so you can review it another time. I'll do a whole video on space repetition and how useful it is, but that's why I prefer Anki. And ever since I started using Anki, it would save me a lot of time. I would just screenshot my lecture slides or I'd copy and paste my lecture slides, move them into Anki and use the tools that it has to turn those into flashcards. When I first started med school, I didn't know a single person who used Anki, but now in third year, every single person I know uses Anki. There's just literally no other way to learn all the information you have to know in an effective way, unless you wanna spend 24 hours of the day studying. At this point, I really hope they sponsor me. In the future, I'll probably get into another video where I go into the nitty gritty of how I use Anki and the specific methods that I use in the app. But for now, that's all we have for this video. If you have any questions, put them in the comments down below. I will reply to all of them. If you like this video, hit like, hit subscribe, hit the bell icon to get notifications next time I release a video. I'll catch you guys on the flippity flip. Catch you on the flippity flip.